Ladies and gentlemen, these are the next two equations in section 8.4. Now, 8.4 just introduced the quadratic formula. But here's what I teach my students. When I come across an equation like this, x squared minus 6x minus 27 equals 0, I see the equation is already in standard form, descending power order equals 0. The leading coefficient is positive, so we're good to go. I don't need to use the quadratic formula on this. This is very simple to factor. You have what, an x minus 9, and you have an x plus 3. When an equation factors this easily, the quadratic, using the quadratic formula is like shooting a cannon to kill a fly, okay? Let's not make work for ourselves, all right? If something factors, factor it. Look how quick this is. x minus 9 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. In this case, x is 9, and in this case, x is negative 3. Especially for those of you going on into college algebra. If I had this problem on a college algebra test in any way, shape, or form, I would expect somebody to do it by factoring. So let's, you know, let's not overuse fancy techniques. Now the one nice thing about the quadratic formula is it will always work for any quadratic equation once the equation has been put in standard form. But again, we didn't use it here. We didn't need it. Now, when I look at this next problem, however, 3x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. This, it would turn out, you could try to factor this, but you're going to find out that you're going to get nowhere fast. So, first of all, before we use the quadratic formula, you put it in standard form. Leading coefficients positive, descending order equals 0. A is 3. That's the number in front of the leading term. B the number, the coefficient of the middle term is a negative 5, and C stands for constant. The constant term at the end is negative 7. So, when I write the formula, x is equal to the opposite of b, b is negative 5, so the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that would be negative 5 squared, minus 4. a goes here and c goes here. a is 3, c is negative 7. And, okay, this is the bar. And then all over 2 times a. So I basically take my formula and I plug into it. Opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now I evaluate. I have my division bar. This becomes a 5. Of course, on the bottom we have a 6. The hardest part is what's happening under the radical. Okay? Negative 5 squared is obviously, because negative 5 quantity squared is 25. Negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 7 is a positive 84. So I have x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 109 all over 6. And at this point, what I try to do is, I try to see if 109 can be broken up. You know, if we can pull it into, uh, if we can take out a perfect square. But, let's see, I can just kind of go, we'll do some work off to the side. Is 109 divisible by 4? Let's see. All right, nope, it doesn't, it's not divisible by 4. Is 109 divisible by 9? Nope. It's not. Um, is 109 divisible by 16? No. So, what we have here is as far as we're going to be able to go. 
and there's basically uh, there's basically two answers here. There's a 5 plus the square root of 109 over 6, and there's a 5 minus the square root of 109 all over 6. And we're done.